Abdul Majid, Jamal Muhammad, Askia Muhammad, and Phyllis Muhammad. And of course, we're here for the anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm X. Today is also the birthday of Nina Simone. Give it up for Nina Simone. And in this, we ask the question, how can we deal with the assassinations? How can we deal with the assassinations of George Floyd, of Akai Gurley, of Trayvon Martin? How can we deal with that without dealing with the assassinations of Malcolm X, Patrice Lumumba, Steve Biko? It reminds us of what kind of elder we would like to be. What kind of elder would you like to be? For some elders, just die. Some elders waste away in righteous obscurity. Some elders are wrapped in a shroud of white cloth. Some elders are captured by ivory, locked away. Some elders, because the next elders are coming. Some elders are the only ones at Sunday dinner. Some elders didn't make it to be elders, for assassins take some elders. Some elders are taken for assassination is killing on purpose. Assassination is to make you suffer. Some elders just die. Some elders are killed for purpose. Some elders die slow and kill slow. For the assassins are everywhere. And most old elders know this. Some elders teach the assassins. Some elders are assassins. These elders are the ones who go first. Some elders create images to be exalted, to be slain, to be great, until there's nothing but some elders. The piece you're going to hear tonight is a three-part piece. First part for Patrice Lumumba, second part for Malcolm, third part for Steve Biko. The words you hear are all their words, taken from their last words, the ones that got them killed. aspirations of colonized and enslaved peoples 
are the same everywhere. Their lot, too, is the same. Moreover, the aims pursued by nationalist movements in any African territory are also the same. The common goal is the liberation of Africa from the colonialist yoke. Since our objectives are the same, we will attain them more easily and move rapidly through union than through division. These divisions, which colonial powers have always exploited, the better to dominate us, have played an important role and are still playing that role in the suicide of Africa. The more closely united we are, the better we will resist oppression, corruption, and these divisive maneuvers, which experts in the policy of divide and rule are resorting to. These injustices and the stupid superiority complex that the colonialists make such a display of are the causes of the drama of the West in Africa, as is clearly evident. We are deeply proud of our struggle because it was just and noble and indispensable in putting on, putting an end to the humiliating bondage forced upon us. We have experienced forced labor in exchange for pay that did not allow us to satisfy our hunger, to clothe ourselves, to have decent lodgings, or to bring up our children as dearly loved ones. We have seen our lands seized in the name of ostensibly not laws, which gave recognition only to the right of might. We have experienced the atrocious sufferings, being persecuted for political convictions and religious beliefs, exiled from our native land. Our lot was worse than death itself. We have not forgotten that in the cities, the mansions were for the whites and the tumble down huts for the blacks. Who will ever forget the shootings which killed so many of our brothers? or the cells into which were mercilessly put those who no longer wished to submit to the regime of injustice, oppression, and exploitation used by the colonialists. As a tool of their domination, but we shall see to it that the laws of our native country truly benefit its children. We shall stop the persecution of free thoughts. We shall eradicate all discrimination, whatever its origin. And we shall ensure for everyone a station in life befitting his human dignity and worthy of his labor and his loyalty to the country. Worthy. I ask you to sink your tribal quarrels. They weaken us and may cause us to be despised abroad. I ask you not to shrink from any sacrifice for the sake of ensuring the success of our grand undertaking. The Congo's independence is a decisive step toward the liberation of the whole African continent. Down with colonialism and imperialism. Down with racism and tribalism. And long live the Congolese nation. Long live independent Africa. Long live the Congolese nation.
Congolese nation. Long live independent Africa.
control the politics and the po politicians in his own community. The time when white people can come into our community and get us to vote for them so that they can be our political leaders and tell us what to do is long gone. Gone? By the same token, the time when that time the white man knowing that your eyes are too open can send another Negro into the community and get you to support him so that he can use him to lead us astray. Those days are long gone too. I might point out right here that colonialism or imperialism is not something that's justified in the West. It's one huge complex or combine, and it creates an international power structure. And this international power structure is used to suppress the masses of dark-skinned people all over the world and exploit them of their natural resources. The newly awakened people all over the world pose a problem for what's known as Western interests. Now the press call us racists and people who are violent in reverse. They make you think that if you try to stop the Klan from lynching you, you're practicing violence in reverse. I say it is time for black people to put together the type of action, the unity, that is necessary to pull the sheets off of it. I would like to point out that the approach that was used by the administration right on up to today, see, was designed skillfully to make it appear that they were trying to solve the problem when they actually weren't. They would deal with the conditions, but never the cause. They only gave us tokenism. Tokenism benefits only a few. It never benefits the masses. And the masses are the ones with the problem, not the few. That one who benefits from tokenism, he doesn't want to be around us anyway. That's why he picks up the token. The masses of our people are still have bad housing, bad schooling, and inferior jobs. Jobs that don't compensate with sufficient salary for them to carry on their life in this world. The worst thing the white man can do to himself is to take one of these kind of Negroes and ask him, how do you feel, boy? So it is very important for you and me to see that the only way that our problem is going to be solved, it has to be with a solution that will benefit the masses upper class or the so-called upper class. Actually, there is no such thing as an upper class Negro because he catches the same hell as the other class Negro. All of them catch the same hell, which is one of the things about racism. No such. It makes us all one. Thank <laughs> you. 
classical range. No smiles allowed, no feelings allowed, no movement allowed, no reaction to the rhythm allowed. What have we done? Private sex minds, God, and priests, classical sonic vortexes. And it's supposed to be the origin of music like birds don't sing, like bird ain't set loose in our dreams. How many years in this waste? Plantation, mosh pit, jazz, overload, theory and nostalgia. A sickness, a homesick, searching for borders, a need to belong to a social construct, future for self, soul, for self, death for self, even your rebirth for self, check the calendar, the sex, the jazz in the city, in the country, no country. Dig up the earth, cover our secrets, hide our memories, the jasmine, the sex, the ritual, zip your lips, don't hum a word, don't hum a word on the banks of Jordan in the swamp, on the dark, sweet tide, tickling us out, the blinding gaze. The pulse of the internet. Consumers with no product. Plastic dust in the wind. All we are is plastic dust in the wind. All we are now is plastic dust in the wind. Dear Malcolm, help us. We scream from the belly below. We hungry, full, but they still, but they still, we still screaming from the belly below. We still kiss the foot of the drummer. We, we ritual inside the gym bay. We, we, we cry out to you, brother Malcolm. Look what has happened. Look what we've done.
come to the group that has longest enjoyed confidence from the black world. The white liberal establishment, including radical and leftist groups, the biggest mistake the black world ever made was to assume that whoever opposed apartheid is an ally. How many white people fighting for their version of change are really motivated by genuine concern and not by guilt? I'm not sneering at the liberals and their involvement. Neither am I suggesting that they are the most to blame for the black man's plight. Rather, I am illustrating the fundamental fact that total identification with an oppressed group in a system that forces one group to enjoy privilege and to live on the sweet on the sweat of another is impossible. The philosophy of black consciousness expresses group pride and determination by blacks to rise and attain the envisioned self. At the heart of this kind of thinking is the realization that the most potent weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. We are concerned with that curious bunch of nonconformists who explain their participation in negative terms. That bunch of do-gooders that goes under all sorts of names. These are the people who argue that they are not responsible for white racism and the country's inhumanity to the black man. These are the people who claim that they feel oppression just as acutely as the blacks and therefore should be jointly involved in the black man's struggle for a place under the sun. These are the people who say that they have black souls wrapped up in white skins. Nowhere is the arrogance of the liberal ideology demonstrated so well as in their insistence that the problems of the century can only be solved by a bilateral approach involving both black and white. The integration they talk about is first of all artificial in that it is a response to conscious maneuvering rather than that dictates of the inner soul. People forming the integrated complex have been extracted from various segregated societies with their inbuilt complexes of superiority and inferiority and continue to manifest themselves. Given the facts of the situation where a group experiences privilege at the expense of others, then it becomes obvious that a hastily arranged integration cannot be the solution to the problem. It is rather like expecting the slave to work together with the slave master's son to remove all the conditions leading to the former's enslavement. One does not need to plan for or actively encourage real integration. Once the various groups within a given community have asserted themselves to the point that mutual respect has to be shown, then you have the ingredients for a true and meaningful integration. That each group rise and attain the envisioned self. Out of this mutual respect for each other and complete freedom of self-determination, there will obviously arise a genuine fusion of lifestyles. This is true integration. Thus, it becomes clear that as long as blacks are suffering from inferiority complexes, as a result of 400 years of deliberate oppression, denigration, and derision, they will be useless as co-architects of a normal society where man is nothing else but man for his own sake.
Thank you all. That's Janice Lowe over there on voice and piano. This is Aquiles Navarro on trumpet and synthesizer and effects. And percussion. This is Kira Nuringer on alto saxophone and synthesizer and percussion and guitar amp. This is Chaser Holmes from Brooklyn. Give a big shout out to our dear sister, Kamei, who couldn't make it tonight. Give some spiritual love to her. And Irreversible Entanglements will be back very, very soon. So stick around with like, on the internet and stuff. Thank you.